In the world of programming, there are a few hurdles that are hard for the mind to wrap around. The first one, it's functions. It can be hard to understand at first, and really you just need to practice with it over and over and over again until it just clicks in your brain, just like that. The next one is loops, and then we've got objects and object-oriented programming and things like that, but the first one is functions, and once you understand functions, things actually get a lot easier. But this is the first major mind hurdle to get over. So it's really good for us to get some serious practice with functions right now. Now functions are an everyday part of life. We actually need to know these. You can't write JavaScript without functions. Well, actually that was a lie. You could, but you're not going to get very far. Your, your general code or your, your entire application is going to be extremely basic and not very dynamic and it's going to get very, very long and you're going to copy and paste a lot. Now there's a general rule in programming called dry, which means don't repeat yourself. And how we do this is with a thing called a function. So we can write the logic just once and we can execute it over and over and over again. And so, for example, if we were converting Celsius to Fahrenheit and uh, we wrote out the formula the long way 10 times and we realized that we, we got the formula wrong and it's in four different files, we are going to have to go and change those four different files and do a find and replace on all of them. That kind of sucks. Whereas if it was just in a function, you could just fix the function once and it fixes it everywhere else. Now functions can be a little confusing if, at first, but you know what, honestly, just keep working at them because they get easier with time. And I think without further ado, we should just really jump into this. So let's first create a simple and useless function that adds 100 and divides by three. And it's just going to take uh, one number, divide by 100, or rather add 100, then divide by three and return whatever that number is. So we start off with function, it's a keyword, and let's just call it do math. And it's going to take whatever number we give it. We have some opening and curly brackets for it to do some logic in here. Now we don't know if this number is actually going to be a number. We could make sure it's a number. So we could always say num is equal to number num. And let's make sure that's spelled correctly. There we go. And then we can say, if num is an actual number, then we could do stuff in here, else not a real number. And so now our function is split into two because we've got an if else statement in here. Now we could do a return statement down here. We can also do a return statement in here and in here. So let's do that. If it's not a real number, let's just return a Boolean of false. And if it is a real number, so do 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 do, is a real number. We said we want this number to add 100 and divide by three. So let's say var new number is equal to num plus 100 divide by three. And if we want to make sure that that strictly turns out this way, we can use the rule of Bedmas, brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So it's going to do number plus 100 first, whatever that turns out to be, and then it's going to divide it by three. And let's just return new number. So this is either going to return false or it's going to return the new number. And let's make that a little smaller so we can see this on one page. And down here, let's say var custom num is equal to do math, whatever number we want to give it. So let's give it 343 because random numbers. Save that. And if you were to open this in your page right now, you'll see that nothing happens because we performed all of this logic and we returned either a Boolean or a number into this particular variable called custom num, but we didn't do anything with custom num. We didn't console log it or anything like that. So let's go ahead and console log now, console.log custom num. Now let's open up our page and hit refresh. And so we can see the number here is 147.6666666666. What if we give it something that's not a number? Let's say the number is Caleb. Well, Caleb's not a number. I'm a person, not a number. It returns false because that was not a number. It did not turn out the way we expected it to. Now, should we want to execute this function over and over and over and over again, we could simply do this. We could say, let's do it with 30. Let's change all of these, do, 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 do. Let's move that up and let's go ahead and just console log every single one of these. 
And so here it is, it's just gonna console log every number. We're just constantly overwriting the same variable here. Let's go ahead and see what this returns. First one is false, and that's because the name was Caleb. Yep, that's not a number. The second one was 30, so we added 100 divided by three, and we get 43.3 repeating. Next one was 50, so 50 plus 100 is 150 divided by three is 50. That turned out really nicely. 501 plus 100 divided by three, 200.3 repeating. Then we get 41. Minus 90, this is an interesting one. So minus 90 plus 100 is just 10. 10 divided by three is 3.3 repeating. And then three plus 100 is 103 divided by three, 34.3. That was a lot of threes, wow. And so that is the power behind a function. And hey, if one of these turns out to be incorrect, we can always go back here and say, oh, actually, that wasn't supposed to be divided by three. It was supposed to be divided by four. And watch this. All those numbers change. So if you're interested in working along with me, here's what you can do. Create your first function and just pass in a number as its one and only parameter. And then just work with the number a little bit. Even if you just do return num, that's better than nothing. So go ahead and give that a shot. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the next function, which is going to be a little bit different, but you know, sort of the same thing. Let's create another function in here. But this time we're going to create a function based on something that JavaScript does. You notice how we've been writing document.get element by ID, and then whatever the element is, the element ID. We've been writing that a lot. We can shortcut that. In fact, you actually see this a lot in a lot of JavaScript libraries. We can write a function, we'll just call it dollar sign, and we're gonna pass in the ID. And then what we can do is we can simply return this. And so now we've got a function called dollar sign. It takes an ID, whatever that ID is, and it says, hey, return document.getElementById. We need to change that to our variable. And it's gonna look for this in our document object model. And it's just simply going to return it. Then we can work with it a little bit later. So let's, let's try this. Let's say var title is equal to ID of title. And then we wanna change that title dot inner text is equal to custom inner text. And we need to actually make sure this exists. So let's go ahead and create an H1 in here with an ID of title. There's nothing in it. JavaScript will populate this for us. And just to make sure we know what's going on here, console log ID is, and this looks like a function now, doesn't it? Function of log, first parameter, second parameter. Let's open up our page and hit refresh and we're going to see custom inner text. False was from this one up here. Let's just go ahead and comment that out for now. And you can see the ID is title. So what this is doing is saying, hey, get the element by its ID of title, matches up here. Store that in a variable with your return statement. So that's what we did. We, were, we stored it in a variable called title. And then we can use that. It's the exact same as doing this. Just bear with me here. It's the exact same as doing this, only now you're writing a lot less. And if you ever wanted to create another one, you could always do var custom element, whatever your element is, is equal to custom ID, and then custom elem dot inner HTML is equal to something here. You could do something like that. And now you're shortcutting it. Now you're not writing document dot get element by ID, parentheses, whatever your ID is, over and over and over again, you're just writing dollar sign. So it's a nice way of shortcutting that. Lastly, let's go ahead and create a function where we convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we start with a function, let's call it C to, see if I can spell this right the first time, Fahrenheit. Let's actually do this, that's called, uh, yeah, I don't really like that it says that, so let's just do C to F, and we can add a comment in here. Uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now we need to give this a number. What is the Celsius number? So C num, something like that. Doesn't need to have an underscore, can if you want. And we need to perform some math here. So let's do variable var Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit there is equal to, what is the math that we want to do? Variable Fahrenheit is equal to whatever Celsius is. So C num 
times 1.8 plus 32. And so let's put some brackets in here so that it's always executed first. Again, that's just order of operations. You don't necessarily need it because multiplication is going to come before division. That's neither here nor there. That is just math. And then we can return Fahrenheit. Now we're not doing any checks in here. We're not typecasting C num as a parameter or as a variable. We're just assuming that it is a number of some sort. So let's go ahead and create some variables in here. We got var, let's say what zero degrees is. So C to F, and we'll just put the number zero in there. So whatever that's going to be. And let's do console.log zero. Hey, fun fact, you can also put lines of code on the same line as long as there is a semicolon. So your computer is going to read this from top to bottom and say var zero is equal to, and then it gets to the semicolon and says, oh, hey, okay, well, this part is done. So let's go ahead and execute this as if it was on its own line. So we're gonna do that one. What is room temperature? Well, room temperature in Celsius is 20. Let's call this 20. And what is boiling? So boiling, boiling in Celsius is 100 degrees. What is that in Fahrenheit? And just for funsies, let's do freezing and let's put in a number of minus 40. So what is minus 40 in Fahrenheit? Let's go ahead, refresh our page. So we have that console log from our previous function, but we can see zero degrees Celsius is equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That is correct. Uh, 20 degrees is 68 Fahrenheit and freezing minus 40 Celsius is the same in Fahrenheit. It's also minus 40. Now, why is this important to know? Well, because we're actually doing some math in here. And what if we wanted to write this out manually every single time. We would have to replace this with whatever number is in here, so zero times 1.8 plus 32. We're writing it out again. And then we have to do 20, and then we have to do 100. And we'd have to write that out every single time, and we're not interested in spending all day typing. We're interested in writing good code. So what we do is we throw it in a function, and you know what? The worst case scenario here is what if all of these are wrong? What if instead of 32, there was a typo and it was 31? Well, it's not going to make a big difference when it comes to Fahrenheit, when we're talking about, you know, room temperature, but still the number is wrong. And so we'd have to go through and fix all of them all at the same time to that. Well, that's no way to live your life. And if it wasn't a function, well, the mistake would have been 31 here. And all we have to do is change it back to 32. And all four of these are fixed with one single keystroke. So now we are being much more cognizant of where we're spending our time. In fact, we can actually even shortcut this. We don't need to put that as a variable. We can just go ahead and return whatever Celsius is as a number times 1.8 plus 32. All right, that is three different functions in JavaScript. By now, you should be somewhat familiar, at least with the syntax, with how it looks. Before we move on to your next mini project, what I would really like you to do is try writing a function on your own. It doesn't have to be useful. The first function I wrote here was adds 100 and divides by four. Like I'm never going to use that function in real life, but it is good practice. So don't forget, as a reminder, Functions start with a keyword function. It has some sort of name, parentheses, and then you have arguments. These are optional. You can do absolutely nothing if you wanted to. And it has a return statement to store whatever data you want in a variable. So return, return something. And then to execute it, you could do var name is equal to name, like that. Or if you just wanted to execute it, not store anything in a variable, you can also just do it this way. So go ahead, give this a shot. I'm not gonna tell you what kind of function to write. It's neither here nor there. It could be a, a good type of function, a useful function in real life or not. It doesn't really matter. Get as complicated or simple as you like. I just want you to be able to write a function because in our mini project, we are going to be writing a function. Go ahead, give that a shot. Don't forget, I'm here to help. You have a comment section down below. Don't forget, if you have a question, please ask your question. I'm here to help. I want this to be easy for you. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started on this next mini project because this is where things start to get a little bit fun. I think it's gonna get a lot funner from here on out.